My name is Dennis Engel. I'm a professor at Mohawk College. We're talking about entrepreneurship. Today, we're talking about social entrepreneurship. What is social entrepreneurship, you ask? Well, to think about social entrepreneurship, we have to go back to our triple bottom line. When we're talking about making money, it's not just good enough to make money. We're talking about balanced scorecard. We're talking about ways, metrics for our company. So in what we learned previously is the triple bottom line is all about profit, planet, and people. So it's not good enough just to make money. I don't want to buy your shoes. If you're paying somebody in Sri Lanka seven cents a day to work in a sweatshop for 14 hours, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to buy your shoes. Furthermore, if you're selling me something that's made in Mexico and it's a cheaper kind of paint, but I know that you're dumping all sorts of chemicals into their rivers and you're not paying attention to the planet, I don't want to buy your paint. I don't want to hear about it. So if you want to make profit from my dollars, I want you to respect people, planet, and profit. Now, social entrepreneurship. We could, in a perfect world, do good things all the way around. There are some companies that will, and there is a paint company that takes in water, processes, makes their product, and the effluent, the resulting water coming out of their plant is cleaner than the water going in. Wow, that's pretty cool. So not only do they have employees, they're worrying about people, they're doing good things for the planet, and they're making money. So that's the perfect company, the perfect entrepreneurship endeavor. You're fulfilling all three of these. Well, here's another thought. What if profit was zero, impact on the planet was zero, but you were doing really good things for people. You were getting people jobs that maybe otherwise couldn't have a job. Think organizations like United Way. Typically, nonprofit organization, not too interested in sustainability and environment, but definitely interested in people in the city. People that are either disadvantaged, people that need help, people that can raise their standard of living somehow because of social entrepreneurship. So we're going to use the word organization more than we use the word company or employer. So we're talking about an organization that wants to have social entrepreneurship that's worried about more worried about the planet and or the people and not too worried about profit. Here's an example of social entrepreneurship. The Grameen Bank, pretty famous example in Bangladesh. And what they do is they give loans to poor people, very small loans, to people without collateral. They don't demand collateral. And the idea is that they help them do work, get a job, provide for their family in ways that uh, other traditional banks would not. It's so small and it's without the collateral that uh, traditional banks would not lend out any of this money. But what they found is that their customers, people that really need these loans, are actually very good at repaying them. And the bank has been very successful and improved the quality of life for all those people in Bangladesh. So much so that the creator won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006. Look this up in our case study. It's pretty interesting reading the Grameen Bank, something that's done on a global scale in a very large country and it's a very large organization. So let's think about what we can do on a small scale. Think about anybody who's disadvantaged, who needs social help, who can make Hamilton a better place. Well, okay, here's one example. Suppose there's artists out there who are creating works of art. For some reason, people that have any sort of mental illness, depression, are very good at creativity and very good at art but they're actually not very good at entrepreneurship. So what if you created an online website for selling art for these people? So you, they bring the art to you, you take a picture, you create the image, you have the price, the artist put all that on your website. That would be pretty cool to do that for a number of different people all creating art and have 
that disadvantage. A normal art gallery may not carry their work, may not try and sell it, and they probably couldn't sell it for themselves, who knows, but supposedly you could do a better job and you could help them sell their art. Here's another example. And here's a way to make sure that you have lots of customers. You're going to do something social for the disadvantaged. People without a job are disadvantaged. And people without a job fall in two categories. One is the ones that show up on Stats Canada that are looking for a job and can't find one. And there's other people that just can't get a job but they're not really looking. And if that number is anywhere between 6 and 9 percent, it's higher in the United States right now, but that's an incredible number of people. So if you could help these people find a job, yeah, it'd be a great thing for Hamilton and be a great thing for these people. Part of the problem is how are you going to make money? In this example of the art, you could take a cut. You could take a bit of a risk doing all the work at no cost, and maybe you could take a cut of the pie so that if it's sold for whatever, you could take 10% or 20, who knows. People getting a job. A lot of people can't present themselves very well. A lot of people have trouble in an interview. Here's a brainwave. What if you videotaped people talking about themselves, sort of like an online resume, post them on your website or post them on YouTube, people looking for a job. And I'm thinking about people like plumbers, truck drivers, um, housekeepers, whatever. But maybe people that have problems with a traditional resume and a traditional interview and maybe that's not an important part of the job, but uh, certainly possible. Then employers could look on your website, see the video, and hire people. You could try and find some way to make money out of that business model, but there's another example of social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship. So far we've talked about a couple examples dealing with people. Employment, selling their wares, getting jobs, adding value, an outlet for people to apply their talents and their skills. But we we're talking about profit, planet, and people. How about the planet? Can we think up any ideas that might happen for helping Hamilton, helping our part of the planet be a better place? Hmm, I don't know. I can think of one little example. Suppose we made a website. Here's our website, and what I want to do is I want to evaluate, create some metrics, but I'm going to investigate different organizations like a steel company that I haven't put a name to, and of course Mohawk College. What if my website rated them in terms of how environmentally friendly they are? So this might be a 2 and Mohawk might be a 10. And we'll measure things like uh, paper use versus paperless, how they treat their employees, whether they have daycare, whether they uh, emit much sewage into the and garbage pickup and how much they recycle and all those kinds of things. But we'll give everything a rating and we'll put them on our website and we'll call it uh, Sustainability Hamilton. I don't know how we could make money, maybe we could sell advertising on our website. People will go here to look at it that are environmentally conscious. Don't you want to know if uh, Rona or Home Depot is higher on the sustainability scale? That, If that's important to you, then that might be the store you go to. But if you're looking on our website, then we could sell advertising space and we could allow advertisers their spot on our page. And of course the presumption is it would be good companies, good in terms of environmentally conscious and uh, sustainable, that would advertise on our page. There's an example of something you might want to do for social entrepreneurship that would help the planet. Here's another example of social entrepreneurship. We're talking about do something to help the planet, in particular Hamilton. That's where our school is, that's where we live. Suppose you're a group of architecture students. When the architecture students have some free time and they want to help the city. Well, one thing they notice, there's a lot of empty storefronts, derelict buildings, commercial buildings that are for sale, but they're actually fairly run down. They're always for sale, the realtors are having trouble selling them, 
and nobody will buy it. So these architects were driving around and they saw a number of these places and they said, that could look really nice. And what they did was they started creating artist renderings. They started taking their AutoCAD programs and actually creating a vision of what that rundown building could look like. And they're creating a business, their entrepreneurship venture is to do this for commercial realtors. So the realtor can say to the customer, this is what your building could look like. You should buy it and take this rendering and it'll take a little bit of money, but it could look like a beautiful thing. There's an interesting venture. There's an interesting opportunity, social entrepreneurship.